Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about not working in accordance with modern practices. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a bit of a story. Hi Frederick, long time subscriber here who would really appreciate your advice. I enjoy my first job as a developer, but I'm scared of learning the wrong things and falling behind the f falling behind the IT times. It's a lack of work experience with frameworks and infrastructure tools such as Docker, and Q Docker, Kubernetes, CI and CD and so forth. A disadvantage when applying for jobs at a bigger company. Shortly about my background, I have no traditional degree in computer science and I taught myself most of what I know. I've been working at a small company as a back-end developer for over a year now. This is my first job as a developer and I'm happy I've been given this chance. We have a big monolithic application and don't use any frameworks, ORMs or other fancy things like infrastructure tools such as Docker and Kubernetes. We only use VMs and databases in the cloud. Our dev team is small and we don't really have the same way of working that big companies do, such as TDD, Agile, Scrum and so forth. Thus I'm worried that about not getting the right experience with modern in-demand technologies and best practices that are on every job posting I see. Would you consider that a disadvantage from a career standpoint? Or are those just buzzwords that scare juniors away from the job application? Generally, I enjoy my job and the pay is all right, and my co uh, and I like my colleagues. But I fear I'm falling behind or getting risk. Uh, get, I am running a risk of getting stuck and outdated, especially since I'm not work in um, not the one who is working on the newest features of the application. What would you suggest I do in my position? Or what would you suggest I do if you were in my position? Well, this is... Uh, I will take a uh, part of the responsibility for this if... Uh, because this is... See, this is the thing that is very difficult when you communicate at different experience levels and with different perspectives. So. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm completely responsible for this worry that you feel about being outdated because I can imagine as you were mentioning there's a few job postings quite a few that talk about these modern practices and of course if you have identified that you don't actually follow those practices at work well that may get you a little bit worried but at the same time I've been someone who's been telling you that it's fair if you want to stay relevant and have a market value that is decent in in IT it is fairly important for you to have as I like to say core skills which is like the core basic uh, programming skills and be really good at the, the the heart of the craft if you will but to also have a uh, a decent relevancy in the tooling and the under and an understanding of how most companies do their work now that is the area that is for as I uh, interpreted from this this, uh, this uh, subscriber a little bit undefined and for me this is fairly straightforward but for someone who may not I mean if you're on your first job <coughs> this I can understand might be hard to understand or it might be something that feels weird so when I say that you need to have skills that are fairly relevant when I say that I don't mean that you work with every single thing that is requested on the job postings or that you have all the most modern tools. I'll give you a really, really dirty secret, guys. Docker and Kubernetes are very popular tools, but the reality is that there's quite a lot of companies who don't use Docker and Kubernetes, even though they're getting to the point where it's kind of weird that you're not using them because they're so popularized. But it's... Uh, it, it, it's not the case for everybody. I can tell you for a fact that I've worked in two different companies where we didn't use uh, Docker or Kubernetes. And we even had on-prem solutions where we didn't use the cloud. Like we were in the process of migrating over to Amazon when I was there and we didn't use any of this stuff. We just used VMs and we had our own machines that we were running. And this, I will tell you right now, guys, is very normal for quite a lot of companies. 
So this idea of cloud native and uh, knowing all the things about GCP, Azure, AVS and so forth, it has a relevancy, absolutely, but that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you don't have an experience in, in that area that you're so outdated that you're not going to get a job. The thing to know is that when you're applying for a position, you have to think about that the depending on the company and depending on their stack and their value system, they're going to look for different people. And what I mean by that is that if you are looking for, if you go to a company that is looking for someone to take charge, let's say for the sake of argument, they are looking for a lead type of position for such something like their cloud solution. And they're using Amazon, Docker and Kubernetes and so forth. Well, when they're looking for that sort of person, it's the, unless they, uh, it could be hard to find that sort of person, but what they're going to go for is to find someone who really, really perfectly fits that profile as much as the human, the humanity can, because they need someone who's extra good. But that's not always the sort of role that people are looking for. In some cases, they're just looking for someone who is close enough and has the right culture fit f for them to feel comfortable hiring them. An example would be there's, t I, I can just take my own company. We can't find all the time. Like we have tons of people who never, in our case, we use Scala. We've ne I can mean, when I started, I have never used, I had never used Scala in my entire life. I've never touched, written a single line. But I still got the job because I had done other things that w made me so close to the thing that the companies was looking for that they felt, all right, well, Frederick hasn't worked with Scala. That's not a problem because he's been working with all these other things that we are using. So we'll, we'll, we'll accept that and just say that we're going to give him some time to, to learn that stuff. And the same thing is true for you guys. If you are fairly relevant, if you have skills that are close enough and you haven't used say docker kubernetes well i can teach you to use docker and kubernetes in what a few weeks few months tops but uh, like uh, the the thing that the most companies are looking for is not someone who is perfect in every way they're looking for someone who's good enough so that if there are any gaps they, it's fairly cheap for you to learn that sort of stuff. So what I told the subscriber was, I don't think that you need to worry all that much. If you like your place of work and you're not using the latest and the trendiest things, that's not such a big deal. As long as you have, as long as you understand that, of course, in a perfect world, you have all the latest tools I mean, and the latest skills. It's going to make your CV look really great. But nobody can be on the forefront of everything. So what you really need to think about here is, well, if if you really do feel like when you're looking around and you talk to other developers and so forth, that you don't really know what's going on and you don't really have an understanding of, like, you, you, where you, you f have that sensation where you're getting, you're getting less and less relevant because the rest of the IT industry is moving on while your company is not follow, following along, if that makes sense. Well, then it might be time for you to keep yourself a little bit more updated with the more common tools and practices. But that doesn't necessarily, guys, mean that you have to switch jobs. You can still have a job where you're using certain tools and then in your spare time keep yourself fairly relevant and still kind of bridge that gap. Ideally, of course, you have it as part of your work process. I mean, for all you know, you could suggest some of these practices to your place of work because they do have a value. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you shouldn't invest in tools and practices that aren't beneficial to you. It's just that these tools and practices are in demand, well, more or less because they've been proven to have some type of positive effect, right? So what I want you to take away from this is that no, you don't have to be away, be afraid of that. You need to switch uh, you switch your job. If you really like your job, and you, then you don't have to be afraid that you need to switch it up just to keep yourself more relevant. It is good if you have an understanding of the most relevant tools. But as, you, as I said, everything in IT is a range and there's only a few per people who are on the forefront of everything. And these are kind of fanatic people because there's quite a lot of stuff that is going on that you could be missing out on and you don't really know unless you check the job postings and if you go to the job postings and you see that well I'm a little bit behind of the times so I still know what the tools are and I kind of know how to work with them because I've done some stuff in my spare time then 
you should be fairly safe because you can put something like that on your CV. You can say that, well, I know what Docker is, I know what Kubernetes is, I've used it in my spare time, but I've never worked with it. And sure, that might not net you a role as someone who's going to uh, be hired to be the lead developer in a company that very heavily emphasizes those sorts of tools, but it's still going to make you applicable for a role where you might just be consuming or be like using that tool as a normal type of developer. So that's what I want you to really think about here, guys. Don't move away from a good thing that you really like just because you're afraid of that you're not going to get the next job. Try to figure out where you are on the range. And if you feel too stressed out by falling uh, way too behind, then either do some t stuff in your f spare time, try to talk to your company, see if you can start working with some of these more modern practices and see if you can upgrade your own company or worst case scenario, go and have a look at another company. But I would say that that should be the last thing you do if you have a thing that is working out for you. Have a great day.